Hello everyone and welcome to another weather update. Tonight we're going to be talking about the severe weather across parts of the Atlantic seaboard tonight and then into parts of the southeast as well as into parts of Texas. I hope everybody has had a great Memorial Day and remembered all those who have fallen for us and our country. So looking at the 01Z uh, day one outlook for today uh, on Memorial Day, um, we do have a marginal risk into parts of Illinois and then into northeast Missouri and then into southeast Iowa. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then on parts of the Atlantic seaboard into a little bit of the northeast, we do have a slight risk here and a marginal risk all around that. And that marginal risk goes all the way down into parts of the southeast and deep south and into parts of Oklahoma and Texas. And then we have a slight risk down here into parts of the southeast and deep south. And then into Texas, we also do have a slight risk right here. Looking at our tornado risk, we do have a 5% risk up here. And then a 2%, a very large 2% uh, spanning from New York all the way down into southeast Mississippi there. Also with a 2% risk here um, all the way from northern texas and then down into uh, far southern texas there with our wind threat we do have a five percent here into illinois and then parts of iowa and missouri and we have this huge uh five percent from new york all the way down south and then into uh, then west all the way down into oklahoma and texas and then into florida there and then we have a 15% right here all the way from New York all the way down into far eastern North Carolina there and then with our 15% here from about uh, the South Carolina coastline all the way down into the far west panhandle of Florida and then into a little bit of Alabama there and then uh, we have our 15% uh, excuse me into Texas right here and then all the way down into southern Texas there with our hell risk it's pretty similar 5% right here in Illinois Iowa and Missouri then that long 5% uh, all the way from about New York uh, northern New York excuse me down south and then west into Texas then we have our 15% risk here all the way down from all the way up from about uh, southern New York all the way down into Maryland and Delaware. Then we also have a 15% down here in some of these southeast states, and that is in to parts of eastern and southeastern uh, South Carolina, all the way down into uh, Georgia, and then into southern Alabama there. And then we have another 15% risk, and this one is from about southern Texas all the way into northern Texas there, central and northern Texas, and we do have a 15% uh, and a hatch risk in parts of the 50%. And what the dash line means is uh, wh what this 15% risk is, is a 10% or greater probability of two inch diameter hell or larger within 25 miles of a point where the uh, hatch risk outline is, where the outline is and inside of the outline where those dash lines are. So looking here into parts of the Midwest and we're going to look at the zero Z the model for tonight um, Looking into Illinois and then even into um, Wisconsin there you have showers and storms from uh, Southern Wisconsin. This will be uh, right now the zero one Z and then Stretching all the way down into central and northern Illinois there and these storms look like they're still kind of maintaining their strength a little bit and these showers and they're gonna continue to weaken and throughout the next couple of hours and really you can expect these storms to weaken into uh, just some showers into Wisconsin and Illinois um, probably by 12 and maybe 11 and 12 uh, 11 p.m. and 12 a.m. central daylight time uh, tonight looking at our mix layer cape for these areas i mean you really don't have much at all so uh really nothing to um, help these not a lot to help these storms 
grow but you'll have just a little bit of cape and you have um, some cape right now just a little bit into Wisconsin and into Illinois I mean a couple hundred joules per kilogram uh, nothing much definitely nothing for uh, severe storms for sure but just some um, probably weaker storms and into the uh, um, probably just some showers tonight so now looking at uh, parts of the mid-atlantic and northeast tonight um, looking at the 0ZH triple R again, uh, you do have some scattered storms and showers into the northeast, and then the H triple R does show um, definitely some stronger to severe storms moving into uh, Maryland and New Jersey, there into Delaware as well, and then you just have some showers up into parts of the northeast, and then probably stronger, uh, maybe two severe storms moving through like New Jersey and then even into Connecticut and uh, Rhode Island and Massachusetts over the next couple of hours and then um, really it gets out uh, most of the uh, storms continue to move out over the next couple of hours and then you do have um, looks like Massachusetts will uh, definitely get some uh, heavy rain for uh, the next couple of hours into late tonight and then maybe even into early to uh, uh, late tonight to early tomorrow, um, but definitely probably they won't be uh, they'll still be strong, but they won't be severe uh, later into the night. Hopefully not, at least. Looking at our 850 millibar uh, winds, we do have uh, those low level with that low level jet moving into the northeast and your tornado threat for tonight is uh, diminishing pretty much right now and you're not really going to have that threat for uh, much longer tonight but as you can see that low level jet moving into parts of the northeast like Connecticut and into Rhode Island there in Massachusetts I mean a uh, mid 30 not low level jet but you're not going to have much instability with this uh, looking at our Mixler cape right now for this um yeah definitely not much instability at all mainly just probably across parts of uh possibly pennsylvania and into new jersey and then mainly into maryland and into delaware there so now looking into parts of the southeast and then into uh pretty much alabama and georgia and then into florida um we do have some storms uh ongoing right now some uh, severe but looking right here with these storms you're going to have these storms mainly into southern georgia and southern alabama and then they're gonna kind of move um southeast and then they're still going to maintain some of their strength and then showing up on these here the h triple r does have uh some more storms trying to form up into the uh florida panhandle there and then still some moving into uh, southern Georgia there and then really as you get late uh, very late tonight into early tomorrow um, you're still gonna have some uh, clusters kind of sort of online trying to show up on these zero ZH triple R moving through uh, parts of the uh, Big Bend of Florida and then into southern Georgia there and then by uh, very very early tomorrow morning these storms are pretty much going to uh, lose their intensity and strength and then they'll probably be uh, pretty much out of Florida, Georgia, and Alabama by tomorrow morning. Now looking at our mixed layer cape, definitely quite a bit more cape than, you'll, than you're uh, seeing in the northeast and mid-Atlantic mid -Atlantic tonight. Excuse me. Um, well over 2,000 joules per kilogram, 3,000 joules per kilogram showing up there into the uh, Florida uh, Panhandle and then into southern Georgia right there well over 2,000 joules per kilogram and then as you move those storms east they're gonna uh, kind of like eat up at that instability and it'll just stabilize the atmosphere as they move uh, move southeast and then you're gonna have that uh, uh, that instability weaken as well as you get farther into the night into early tomorrow 
now looking at Texas for tonight, you have uh, storms and supercells um, across parts of Texas uh, showing up on the 0ZHRRR. And then you're just going to have these scattered uh, storms that, uh, and supercells that develop into Texas and they'll uh, weaken pretty quickly as they form. And then as you get into the next couple of hours, uh, these storms are going to pretty much uh, lose their strength and just uh, dissipate. And then, as you can really see, the reason why is because of the uh, the cap in the atmosphere uh, limiting these storms from forming. Because you can see right there at the um, surface levels on this uh, sounding right here, that little bit of a um, kind of curve, and then that curve to the left. But as it uh, kind of goes to the right, and that means an increase in temperature there as you get a little bit up into the uh, atmosphere there. And I mean, you can look probably somewhere else to and find a better uh, ver uh, look at this but y you can see where the uh, surface temperature is 84 and then as you go to the right and then a little bit up it'll go to the right as you get a little bit up in the atmosphere and that is that cap there limiting those storms from forming tonight but looking at our mixer cape um, you have crazy amount showing up on these zero ZH triple R um, Looking at a sounding, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, 6,000 joules per kilogram of um, surface-based cape there. But um, just a, a lot of instability. But with that cap, none of those storms are really going to get going unless that cap is broken. Now looking at tomorrow's severe weather threat on Tuesday, May the 28th. We do have a enhanced risk down here, down into central Texas around that as a slight risk spanning all the way from um, far eastern New Mexico, southeastern New Mexico that is, and then into parts of northern Louisiana, then into southwest Oklahoma there, and then a marginal risk all the way from eastern New Mexico all the way into parts of Louisiana, then going north all the way into northern Texas, and then into parts most of the state of Oklahoma, southwest Kansas, and southeast Colorado there. Then looking northwest, we do have a marginal risk into parts of northeast Oregon there, and then into central, and then into parts of northern Idaho there, and then into western Montana. Looking at or looking at our tornado, tornado risk, we do have a 2% risk here into central and a little bit of northern Texas there and then just a tiny little uh, part of southwest Oklahoma there then looking at our wind risk we do have a 30 percent uh, wind risk into parts of central Texas and a uh, hatch risk all the way around that 30 percent and then into parts of the 15 percent and um, basically what that hatch risk means is a 10% or greater probability of winds uh, exceeding 65 knots or greater within 25 miles of these, this um, dashed line here, the outline as well as the dashed lines inside of the larger outline. And then outside of that is a 15% risk for winds ex uh, spanning all the way from far southeastern New Mexico into parts of Louisiana there and then our 5% from pretty much eastern New Mexico all the way east into Louisiana and even into southwestern Arkansas and then into parts of southern Oklahoma there and then looking up into the northwest into Oregon's uh, northeast Oregon into Idaho here uh, and then into Montana just a 5% there into western Montana and central to parts of northern Idaho. And then looking at our hell risk, no hell risk up in the uh, northwest at the moment. But we do have a 15% uh, risk here into central Texas and then into southeastern New Mexico into far southwestern Oklahoma there. And then a hatch risk around that and that is a 10% or greater probability of two inch diameter hell or larger within 25 miles of a part in this hatched and the outline 
and then around that is a 5% all the way from southeastern Colorado into parts of central and western north uh, central and western uh, Louisiana there into Arkansas and then into Oklahoma there and then into southwest Kansas there so looking at the 0ZH triple R for tomorrow this is very early tomorrow morning you already have storms trying to form into central Oklahoma there and then even into parts of Kansas uh, there and then you have some uh, clusters showing up here and probably supercells showing up on the 0ZH triple R and this is tomorrow morning um, on Tuesday and then really going into the mid to late morning hours tomorrow you're going to have these storms um, kind of form into somewhat of a line and then um, they're just going to continue to move south southeastward and then um, just some definitely strong storms um, and some damaging winds for sure in these storms and clusters as they move southeast and then as you get farther into the day into the mid and late evening hours that um that cluster that line is gonna move southward and really a quite a bit of uh storms are just gonna form and then some of them may be longer lived and then you have those storms moving there into texas and louisiana and then into the uh, Texas Panhandle, you do have storms forming tomorrow evening, and then these will be uh, definitely capable of large hail and damaging winds, as well as um, that a uh, little bit of a tornado risk tomorrow. Um, then going into tomorrow, e uh, late tomorrow evening into tomorrow night, you're going to have all these storms, um, quite a few. All the way from Cass, southwest, southwestern Kansas, excuse me, and then into the Panhandle of Oklahoma, all the way across parts of northern, uh, central and northern Texas, and then moving into late tomorrow, uh, very late tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. Still, um, you're going to have this kind of like an MCS try to form here, and this will be definitely capable of producing some damaging winds. And this will be with uh, that little bit of a tornado risk too will be possible, <clears throat> be possible in these storms here. And then going into late, very late tomorrow night into early tom, uh, excuse me, early on Wednesday, you're gonna have that uh, MCS still move southeastward, and it'll continue to move southeastward um, throughout tomorrow night and then into early on Wednesday and then it'll eventually finally kind of start to weaken it looks like uh, very early on Wednesday uh, showing up on these years the HRRR but quite a bit will probably change between um, now and tomorrow night looking at the um, the line very late tomorrow night and then into uh, early on Wednesday so we'll have to watch that looking at our mixed layer cape for tomorrow so tomorrow morning as you get those storms forming into parts of Oklahoma you're gonna have quite a bit of cape uh, where those storms are forming um, just looking at a sound like here um, let's see uh, 2937 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape and then as you can see um, looking at our hodograph right here definitely a curved hodograph showing up uh, there into <clears throat> Oklahoma and then going farther into the day into the afternoon and evening hours you're gonna have quite a bit of uh, mixed layer cape into Texas as the storms eat up at that instability and stabilize the atmosphere uh, as they move kind of south and southeastward looking at our dew points for tomorrow as the storms form into Oklahoma, you're going to have dew points into the uh, lower 60s, possibly into the mid 60s and parts of the state and then into Texas, um, pretty much central Texas points east, uh, dew points well into the 
70s showing up and then into upper the upper 60s as those storms move uh, to the south and just plenty of definitely plenty of moisture especially for uh, this time of year um, for Texas and Oklahoma for those storms tomorrow definitely going to have that chance for a tornado or two and uh, definitely for those damaging winds tomorrow looking at our mid-level jet for tomorrow you're gonna it's gonna start out kind of weak uh, tomorrow morning and then as you get later into the day until into uh, tomorrow night it will begin to amplify for sure and will help um, with those storms in the updrafts and promote that health threat tomorrow now looking at the northwest states tomorrow on the zero z h triple r you're going to have some uh, showers and storms trying to start to form into the early and mid evening hours and then as you get later into the evening into the night you're going to have these storms um kind of get going a little bit into montana and idaho and then really by pretty late tomorrow night to early on wednesday you're going to have some of these storms uh, still trying to move through and just multiple rounds of rains uh showers and storms excuse me um probably in idaho and into parts of western montana uh, late tomorrow night into early on wednesday looking at our instability for to uh, tomorrow night into early on wednesday on these years the h triple r definitely not a lot of instability showing up uh 500 600 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape uh, 700 there showing up into western montana and then across idaho just a couple hundred joules per kilogram but really probably it'll peak around possibly uh 500 600 700 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape tomorrow and then these storms will probably change uh weekend uh, excuse me weekend into just some showers across parts of idaho and, and into montana tomorrow into early on wednesday now quickly looking at wednesday's severe th weather threat on the 29th of may we do have a marginal risk right now in parts of western north dakota and then far eastern montana into eastern wyoming into western south dakota and then into parts of um, northwestern nebraska there and then into parts of central and northeastern colorado there and then into parts of northwestern kansas there then looking south into uh, west texas and then into a far 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 southeastern part of new mexico we do have a marginal risk here for wednesday the 29th so looking at wednesday real quick on the 18z gfs we do have a little bit of a uh, surface based cape uh on the showing up on the 18z gfs and then you're gonna have a little bit uh quite a little bit of instability throughout the central u.s and then as you go south into texas and then into new mexico that uh, you're gonna have some greater instability down there. So looking at our uh, mid-level winds, our 500 millibar winds, so you're gonna have that, your main trough up here into parts of the Northwest, and that'll be helping with that severe weather threat across the central US. And then you kind of have some short waves uh, Southeast as you move, uh, as you move Southeast, and then that'll be responsible for our Texas and our uh, New Mexico severe weather threat on Wednesday. So now looking at our dew points on the 18Z GFS for Wednesday, you're going to have that moisture kind of surge uh, north into um, North Dakota and South Dakota and then into Montana and Wyoming, eastern Wyoming there and then just mainly in the central U.S. as it moves north and then to the south you have um, quite a bit of moisture down there obviously as it's near the gulf there but uh, we'll have to watch wednesday's threat a little bit for sure and then beyond that um, we're not going to have a lot of uh, severe weather potential but will definitely be some days to watch in the future that's going to be it for tonight's update i know it was a definitely a long update 
uh, for sure. But um, I hope. I uh, hope everybody uh, enjoyed, and I hope everybody stays safe tonight and the uh, coming days with the severe weather. And I hope everybody had a uh, happy Memorial Day. And I'm gonna try my best to, uh, and I've said this probably a thousand times, but I'm gonna try my best to uh, get some more videos out um, in the coming days and weeks. And um, Probably won't have a bunch coming up because we're kind of starting to become uh, get into a pattern where we don't have a lot of severe weather. But definitely be definitely be on the lookout in the future as we get uh, later into May into early June as we have that pattern that probably supports more severe weather. But right now we're kind of in a uh, little bit of a lull coming up of severe weather but that's a good thing for sure but uh that'll be it for this update and i hope all of y'all have a great rest of your night